Hello, welcome to Challenge JP. My name is Jacek, and today I will be talking about data cohort analysis and how to calculate churn, retention rates, and user lifetime value. Uh, this sort of analysis is helpful if you're running a subscription-based model business. So for example, you have an online content um, model where user signs up to the service and then they pay a monthly subscription fee. Uh, you may also have an offline business, like for example, gym, uh, when a user subscribes to the, uh, for the membership and then they pay the monthly membership fee. So what we're going to do, we actually want to understand uh, so-called user journey. So we want to see, well, how many users sign up to the service in a given month, and then what happens to these users uh, as their subscription progresses. All right, so let's uh, jump straight into the data. Okay, so what you see in front of you is um, a simple extract from the user database uh, with three columns, event, user ID, and date. Uh, the first column, uh, event, uh, tells you uh, there are three values in this column, in this case. Uh, those values are sign up, unsubscribe, and somewhere below there, there should be a renewal. So we want, basically what we want to analyze is when a user subscribe to the service, uh, when they renew their service and when they unsubscribe, okay? You may have a more data point than that, but those three values will probably be the basic values that um, you have to track against your uh, users. Uh, then you have your user ID column. So that's the column that will, that's the values from this column will allow me to link a specific event to a specific user. And then you have a date, which is basically when, um, which will tell me when um, a given event occurred. Uh, so for example, if I take row number two, uh, I can see here that I have a user, which I call user 001. So it's my first user in the service. Uh, this user sign up. Um, so it started its sub subscription and then uh, that sign up occurred on the 4th of January, 2018, right? If I go, for example, to row number 15, I can see, okay, we'll have a user, which we call 006. Uh, this user unsubscribed, so I left the uh, service, and that happened on the 27th of January, 2018, right? So that's a good start. That's a, that's a um, sufficient raw, raw data. Uh, but the first step uh, that we want to take, apart from extracting the data, is to take the data and um, prepare it for the future analysis, right? Uh, so usually uh, what will happen is that uh, when you receive the raw data, you may have to do what we call, um, apply what we call um, a bit of a data transformation or simply a data preparation for that, okay? So I know already that what I want to do with this data, I want to be able to analyze this data on a monthly basis. Um, not on a daily basis as, as it's presented in here. So I want to add uh, just two more columns, um, which I will call month and um, year. Okay. And then I will just use it for some simple uh, formulas here. Um, you, will, you have probably noticed that I'm using the Google Sheets here, uh, not Excel. Uh, the formulas that I'll be using here and later on the, the, the tables, the pivot tables, uh, you can, they, they are compatible with Excel as well. So if you're using Excel, that's absolutely fine. I've been actually using Excel for most of my uh, life. So I'm kind of trying to um, use maybe Google Sheets uh, just, to, um, just to compare, uh, just to see how those two compare. Okay, so um, for the month, I will use a formula called month open bracket and the date. So I want to just extract the month uh, information from my date. And then for the year, I will use a similar formula, but instead of month, I'll just use year. And again, I want to extract the year information from my date, okay? If you don't understand any of those formulas or the future formulas that I'll be using, uh, do not worry. Um, all you have to do is maybe go to uh, my blog post, you should see the link on the screen. If you don't see it on the screen, it should be in the description. And in my blog, I've listed all the uh, references to the formulas that uh, I use. So you can actually click on one of those links that will take you to a really good resource, uh, which will explain, uh, which will hopefully explain uh, those formulas uh, in a little bit more detail. Okay. Uh, also on this blog, uh, you will see there are links to 
uh, the sheets, the data sheets that I'll be using. So you will see there will be an initial user log uh, sheet, which is that uh, the data set that we're looking at at the moment. And then also I will include kind of the final, um, the final analysis, um, the outcome of today's work. Uh, so you can compare, so you can always go back um, and check your work against it. Right, so uh, don't worry. You can always come go back to um, to all those formulas, all those details, and kind of try to do it uh, yourself. All right, so with those two columns, I'm going to copy and paste them across my sheet. Hopefully, it's gonna show up. Uh, yeah, it's coming up. It's a little bit slow today. Um, okay. So you have month and my year. Um, so now I can uh, create my first summary tables already with this data, okay? Uh, so what I will do here, uh, I will select all my data and I will insert uh, my first uh, pivot table. What I want to, what I want to see uh, is how many signups, how many renewals and how many unsubscribed users I had on a monthly basis. Okay, so I've selected my all of my data with Control A. Now we want to go to a data, uh, insert the pivot table on a new sheet. Okay, uh, I want to populate my rows with event name, and then for my columns, I want to add year, and then also a month. And then for my um, my values, I just want to count the number of users um, that um, will be assigned to a given event. So I'll just click on the user ID. Just make sure that you're using the count, um, not the sum um, formula. Okay. And what I'll just do here, I'll take out the uh, totals for month and year. I would just want to show you from a monthly basis. It's just going to be a little bit easier for the presentation. So what I can see in here already is that um, um, in 2018, let's say in January 2018, 18, I had zero renewals. Um, I had 16 signups and two unsubscribes, okay? And then I can go to February and again, uh, show the same summary uh, level for um, all of the uh, users. Um, so with this information, I can already say, okay, uh, I can create another table called month right here, year. Let's say I just want to analyze the 2018 information. I can select my data all the way until here. Okay, and then I can say, okay, well, what I want to see is that how many users I start my month with. So let's say the, um, let's call it opening users. Okay, then I want to see how many signups I had in a given month, and then how many unsubscri unsubscribes so, subscribes I had, and then Let's call it closing users, right? So it's sort of like the beginning balance of the users and then the closing number of users, right? So my opening uh, number of users will be zero. Uh, my number of signups would be 16, right? I just take the values from the uh, table above. Um, my unsubscribes would be two, and I'm going to use the negative value because it's it's the people that left the service. And then for the closing users, all I have to do is just add my opening balance, my number of signups, and then the uh, number of users that left the service. So I see that, okay, well, at the end of month one, I had, the, I had 14 subscribers, okay? Now, if I want to analyze month two, all I have to do is take my opening balance from month one, and then copy across the formulas from the month before. And then I can do the same for my future months. Okay, great. So now what you can see, 
So if I just kind of put it in bold, slightly maybe change that table, keep the row. Put some formatting in here just to make it a little bit more presentable. Okay, I can see that, all right, well, if I start analyzing the data from uh, this point of view, we will see that started with zero users in month one. Then I started adding some users. A lot of the users from the month one left already in month two. So actually, um, I had the same number of ending users uh, in month, four, month one and month two. Then in March, I started increasing my users, increasing, then they declined, increase again, uh, slight increase, decline, and so, so forth. Okay, So that sort of gives us a basic overview um, when it comes to the number of users, but it actually doesn't give us that much insight. We don't know, uh, for example, of those, I don't know, nine or 15 users, how many of them actually they join in, let's say, a month before? Are those new users? Are they old users? Uh, there was a bit of a blended information in here. So we want to get that, um, that level of insight. We want to go a little bit uh, deeper. Okay, And to do that, we will now use uh, what we call a cohort analysis. Okay, And the uh, what cohort is is basically a gr group of um, users or population that shares a similar characteristics. So in other words, we want to look at our users and we want to group them uh, by um, a, a similar trait, by similar characteristic that they may share between each other. Okay. If we had a more expanded table here and more analytical information, we could potentially have information about the user age, uh, maybe their profession, um, maybe their uh, location, uh, their background, and so on and so forth. So we could actually start grouping users based on this information. But in our instance, the easiest thing to do, uh, also given the information that we have, is to just group users uh, by the month uh, in which they joined, uh, they subscribed to the service. Okay. So what we want to do, we want to um, do a bit of a more uh, data preparation for that, and then um, we will uh, jump to that uh, cohort analysis and hopefully it will make a little bit more sense, okay? So that said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another column called month number, okay? And what this, number, what this column will do, it will just tell me uh, the month in which a user joined the service, uh, but not necessarily month in terms of whether it's January or February, uh, but the month number, uh, if I were to start, start counting um, uh, my months from the beginning of when the service went live. So in this case, we are assuming that we went live uh, in January 2018. Uh, so month one, uh, 2018, would be my month one. Uh, February 2018 would be month two. March would be month three. But for example, February 2019, will be my month 14th, right? Because it's been 14 months since the beginning of uh, the service. So to do that, I will create a um, small formula. So I will do here, I will say, okay, we'll take the, um, this year, then out of this year, out of this year, take out 2018. And the reason is 2018, because that's the year when we started our service, then multiply by 12, and then add a month number. Okay, so in this case, as we said before, January 2018, uh, events will be assigned to month number one. But then if I go, what this formula will do, is yeah in here for example you see that i have event renewal that occurred in november but 2019 uh, so I, I want to make sure that this event is not assigned to month number 11 it's actually assigned to month number 23 because it happened um on the month 23 from when we uh began from when we went um online okay so that uh gives me my uh month number uh, with that I can already uh, start creating some cohort information. So I will just insert a column called cohort month. And what I will want to do with this column is to assign 
particular users. So my interest will be now in uh, the user ID, and I want to assign that user uh, to a particular cohort that that user belongs to. All right. Now, what we say with our cohorts before uh, is that we want to base them on the uh, the month that the, when the user joined. So what I will do now is I will go here and I will add a filter to my table. And then I want to see only users that sign up for the service. Okay, only my signups. And I will take this table Copy that, okay? And then I want to create a new sheet. Copy that here. Okay. And actually what I can do with this sheet, I will call this sheet uh, cohort Look up, and I can replace that cohort number with cohort month because I will use exactly the same information here to assign these users to a cohort month. Okay, so again, what this sheet shows me is just the number of users um, by the sign up events. I'm not interested in when they renewed or when they unsubscribed. The only thing that I'm interested in in here is to see when a given user sign up uh, when online, okay? Because that will that will determine that month of the sign up will determine the uh, cohort month to which they will belong, right? Hopefully, it will make a little bit more sense. If it doesn't now, um, as I will be working for this sheet. So I'm going back to my log export sheet. Um, I'm going to remove now all my filters, okay? And then I want to um, look up uh, the cohort month that the user belongs to, okay? So to do that, I will use a VLOOKUP function. So my lookup value in here would be user ID. I want to take the user ID. Then I want to go to my cohort lookup. And then I want to see which cohort that user belongs to. In other words, I want to see when, in which month, uh, did this user uh, sign up, um, went online, sign up to, to my service. So that, uh, I want to use column number five, and I will use false, because I want to make sure it's an exact match. Okay. And then I'll just copy that across. My table, right. So now, what you'll see now is that for all the users that sign up to the, um, to the service, month number and cohort number is the same, right? Because if they sign up in January, they will just belong to uh, cohort month one, January. Okay, but if you scroll down a little bit further. Um, Okay, let's go, sign up, sign up. Okay, so I'm right here. You will start seeing that we have users, for example, that unsubscribe. Yeah, so this is the user 18. Uh, the month now is, this is uh, September 2018, so the month number is nine, but that user's cohort month is two. The cohort number two means that that user, uh, 0018, sign up, subscribe to the service in February 2018, in month two, uh, and then the event unsubscribe occurred uh, in month nine, okay? So this is where uh, this will differ. And that information allows us to add another column, which I will call a cohort H. I will simply take month number and then so I'll subscribe the cohort month from the uh, month number to calculate that. Uh, so what we're saying is that, well, when you sign up, 
your cohort age, you've been on the service for zero months, okay? Um, and then I'll copy that across, okay? Go down. So again, you will see somewhere towards the bottom of the uh, table. Uh, what you can see here is that that number over here is the uh, the month number at which the event renewal for that user occurred. We know that that user 147, by looking up the, um, the cohort number, they uh, sign up to the service on the month nine. Um, so that would be uh, September uh, 2018. So at this given point when this event occurred, when the renewal occurred, they have been online for um, full nine months, okay? So you simply say, okay, well, they signed up in the uh, September 2018. Now we have June 2018. They have been around for the uh, uh, full nine months. Yeah, that the month one of the, um, when, they, when the sign up counts as zero. Uh, for the purpose of that, uh, this analysis that we have here. Okay, all right. So that uh, gives us our cohort age. And then there's just one thing that we need to add and I will call it an event value. And what I want to make sure when I do my um, analysis in a few minutes is that I will only count uh, signups and the renewals. Okay, I want to discount, I don't want to take in consideration my unsubscribes, any values that are related to unsubs unsubscribes, because if somebody unsubscribed from the service, I don't actually want to count them in my analysis anymore because they left, okay? So I will use a formula if, again, as I said before, if you don't understand any of the formulas, go to the blog, click on the link, okay? So formula is if formula, and then I want to use also or function. So basically I want to say if value in here for my A2 cell equals to sign up or A2 equals to renewal, um, give it a value one, otherwise just give it a zero. Okay. Okay, so that um, did that. Okay, you can see that, yeah, your unsubscribe is a zero, sign up is once. Perfect. Right. Uh, that is the end of the transformation or preparation of data section. Now with all of that, we can select the data and then we can create another pivot table and then start our uh, final analytical work. Okay, so we want to um, select all of the data. Control A and then go here, create a pivot table on the new sheet. Okay, and now what we want to do, we want to populate the rows with cohort month, okay? Right, and then we want to populate our columns with um, cohort H, okay, and then um, we can take out the totals, and then we want to, for the values, we want to add the um, event values, and then this time we have to make sure that uh, there's a sum, not count, because remember, uh, we only want to count the renewals and the signups. We're not counting, um, any of the uh, unsubscribes. That's why we gave them um, value zero, okay? So hopefully that that makes a little bit more sense here while we um, use those values. Okay, so just looking at this data, this data, uh, this table gives us uh, information about our um, user profile. Um, we can actually call it here, user profile. 
and this information is in absolute numbers. So what we can see here, for example, is that if we take uh, cohort number four, right? So cohort um, cohort month uh, number four, uh, we'll see that we have uh, 19 users. So that basically means that uh, in April 2018, we had uh, 19 users that signed up for the service. Again, the cohort age zero indicates as the, uh, the, the initial period sign up. And then uh, of those users that signed up in April, nine of them renewed um, in um, May. And then uh, by month two, uh, there will be seven of them, uh, three of them. So let's say by month six, of the 19 users that sign up to the, um, to the subscription, we only had five renewals by month six. In other words, uh, 14 of the users uh, left uh, by the uh, by the beginning of month um, month six. Okay, uh, and then the same information we can we can do uh, for other cohorts. So that's great. Uh, this is a good uh, this is a good start, and hopefully uh, it's a little bit clearer to what we had in our previous uh, pivot table. Uh, but with this information, what we want to do, we want to add some, uh, maybe some more rel relative information. So what I will do uh, in our next table, I will create the user retention um, table, okay? Which will uh, just be another way of presenting the uh, more or less the same, uh, same data, okay? Um, so for that, what I will do, I'll just copy that entire table. Let's see uh, if I just copy that, just the values. Okay, I will call this table uh, retention uh, percentage maybe. Okay, just take out that, all right. That will do. And then what I want to do with it, um, a bit of a formatting here, so. Yeah, to that. yeah, that should be okay. Uh, shade, and then instead of a grand total, I will call it average or even average percentage. Okay, the cohort, um, everything else stays as we had. And then what we want to do, we want to change our calculation here. So we want to take the number of users that we started with, sorry, the number of users in a given month divided by the number of users that we started with, okay? So we'll just use that formula in here and I will anchor my denominator because I always want to uh, divide that number uh, that we take in a given month by uh, the same number, so by the number of uh, users that sign up. Okay, and then I want to display it as a percentage, maybe with just one decimal point. Okay, and I will copy that formula across and let's see what we get. Okay, perfect. So now what we have is we're using the same information from um, table above, but we want to show it in the relative terms. So what we're saying in here is that, okay, um, just kind of make that bold. Okay, so what we're saying here is that, okay, um, again, if I take the uh, cohort uh, four, so cohort uh, month four, what we're saying is that, okay, in month zero, I retained all of my users, but then uh, by month one, I've only retained 47.4% of those users. And then by month six, it's 26.3%. So this is that number, what we were saying before, basically, if you, uh, look at the absolute numbers in here. What we're saying is uh, that we were retaining five users by month six out of 19. So that's five out of uh, 19, that's 26.3, okay? So that gives us a little bit uh, uh, and more kind of relative, um, uh, relative information in percentage uh, basis. And you can already see, just very quickly looking through this data, you can see that you have some cohorts that stayed 
longer than the average number of users, right? So your averages are here. Yeah. And you can see, okay, well, there's users from month four. They've actually stayed online for relatively long. Uh, also, the users in month 10, month 11, just very quickly looking at that. So there are some already um, users that have cohorts that perform better than others. Okay. On the same, by the same logic, you can see that month eight cohorts, so all the users that join in August, majority of them um, drop off by month one. Okay. So something um, must have happened then. So again, this is just a very quick glance and you always have to bear in mind when you do this sort of analysis that you're dealing with, in our case, we're dealing with relatively small numbers, okay? So I would definitely encourage you, if you had this data, to go back and to see maybe what you did uh, in month four, month 10, uh, month 11, that uh, my explain, may explain uh, what uh, might have kept those users for a bit longer. And I would definitely check the uh, that month eight users. So August users, just to see if there was anything that you know can explain that significant drop in those number of users, okay? Again, bear in mind you're dealing with a small number of numbers, so it could be a random uh, pattern, uh, but I would, um, again, definitely uh, check that out, okay? So, that in mind, uh, one thing that we do want to, which is related to the retention, but the opposite would be uh, churn. So I want to now see how my users, uh, how quickly my users leave uh, unsubscribe from the service. And that will give me a little bit more, hopefully, information uh, that I need to complete my insights. Okay, so again, I'll just recycle this table Paste it over here, and then this time I will call it. I will call it an incremental. Don't worry about those formulas for now. Pilonas incremental churn. So churn is just an indicator of um, how many users we actually losing from our service. And the reason why I call it incremental is because I want to see. Uh, I don't want to see it. On the total numbers, I want to see that change on a month-to-month -month basis. Okay, so I'll do a few cleanups here. Um, I'm not interested in changing the month zero because month zero is my sign-up month. But what I want to do with this um, cell is to look at the difference between this month, the users in this month, total number of users in this month minus the users in the previous month and I want to divide it yeah because it all has to be in relation to my base I want to divide it by the number of users that I started with okay hopefully it will make a little bit more sense later again um, if anything here is too quick don't worry I have written everything down um, in a more kind of structured way. Uh, and you can, again, download that uh, final sheet um, uh, from, uh, from my blog. So my blog basically has all that uh, more structured information around the, uh, this tutorial, as well as all the links. And then you can just go back um, and um, try to understand it by yourself. Okay, but hopefully it is not too unclear. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this formula across and then explain what I've done here. Okay, that worked. Um, that's my average in here. All right, so this is again an interesting, um, interest, you can, you can, interesting uh, analysis. So you can see that uh, compared to, I can just put that maybe a zero percentage here, just so it's more clear. 
So this is an interesting profile that you see here. Uh, so what we see is that on average, we lose 64.5 users within the first month of the service, okay? And then we have a bit of a drop off, drop off but it's much slower. The pace of, of our churn, our churn is much lower, uh, but there's a big drop in the number of users within the first month. And one of the way you can probably easily explain that is by a free trial, right? So I would suspect that in this case, uh, what we're dealing with here is that we uh, offer a free sign up, yeah, for a month. And just before the uh, the first renewal, the first charge for the, charge for the membership, uh, users simply unsubscribe from the service. Maybe they're not interested, maybe it's too expensive, maybe the quality is but whatever it is, uh, that seems to indicate that um, that's what's causing that. So I could, for example, just highlight that um, and just call it a free trial, okay? But again, that's that's a good indication of how good our, uh, our offerings, our service is. And then again, you can see that in here, uh, you definitely have that number so we can highlight that in red. Um, maybe not as, yeah, there you go. That's a little bit less dramatic red um, that uh, you can see that, that uh, there's a big drop off um, in here. And then we had a few positive um, numbers in our retention. So for example, you could go uh, highlight that number in some sort of green. Yeah. Um, I think number four was also a good number here as well. Okay. Okay. So see, you can already start uh, doing that um, analytical investigation in here. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we basically finished with the um, simple uh, user journey. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, something is not clear, uh, go to my website, uh, go to that blog. Uh, if any uh, thing that you want to discuss with me uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, you can um, schedule a free consultation. Just click on one of the buttons on the website that will take you to um, uh, my schedule and you can simply select the uh, one of the time slots that uh, suits you and then we can have a one-to-one 30-minute -one, uh, call um, but what I want to talk uh, about um, now uh, just for the end is uh, user um, lifetime uh, value calculation okay uh, this is something that uh, will show you how you can use this information to calculate um, your financial metrics uh, for your users. Okay, so I will need um, my retention numbers. Uh, I'll just copy that header here. And um, I'm only interested in average retention for the purpose of this exercise, what I want to check, what I want to see is what, what is the average value of the users uh, that would sign up to an average cohort, okay? That's why I'm only uh, looking at the particular, I'm not looking at the particular um, uh, cohort. I just want to take my average user in here, okay? So that's my average retention I've taken from, um, Table above, can show that again as a percentage. Great. Okay, and then let's see what would happen if I took an average cohort and I sign up 100 users in that cohort. Okay, so I'm, my starting number would be 100 users. And then I want to see, okay, well, how many of those 100 users uh, would renew their subscription by month one? by month two, by month three, and so on and so forth, okay? So we know that on average, 35.5% of users renew their subscription by month one. So in our case, I would take um, my 
user number, 100. Okay, I will put dollar sign in from just to encode this number, and then I will multiply it by my retention rate. Okay, copy that across. All right, so now I can see, all right, I'm starting with 100 users, 35.5 or 36 or 35 of users will um, renew uh, in month one, at the beginning of month one, 30.5 beginning of month two, again, this is average, so it will be a 30 or 31 and so on and so forth. All right, that's perfect. Now, let's say that uh, my renewal fee, so my monthly subscription is uh, one, uh, one pound or one dollar, one euro. Okay, so let's just do that monthly fee. Uh, and I would put that monthly fee here as one. Um, and yeah, let's show it in pounds. Okay, so it's one pound. Now you will see that I haven't put any value. I will just put a zero here just to make it more explicit. The reason why it's zero is because we are assuming that um, when you sign up to the service, so Imam Zero is a free trial. So you actually don't pay any for the, anything for the sign up. If you were charging, you were, you were to charge users for the sign up, um, then you would just put whatever the sign up fee uh, here is. Okay, so then my revenue, okay, so my income in this case would be my number of users that I still have in this given month times my monthly fee or just my, my fee in general. Okay, so if I copy and paste this formula across, what you can see is that in month one, I generated 35.5 pounds, 30 pounds, and so on and so forth, okay? Based on the number of users that uh, I managed to retain. So if I take the total revenue number and I sum all of that, you'll see that my revenue equals to 200 pounds. Okay, we know that my number of users was 100. So my average revenue per user is simply my total revenue divided by number of users. So in this case, it will be two pounds and one cent. So this is an important information because that way you know that, okay, well, based on, the inform based on my metrics, based on the numbers that I saw here, I generate on average uh, two pounds. So for example, if I have a marketing campaign, uh, acquisition cost, right? So for example, I know that uh, if I, I don't know, it cost me one year, one pound 50 to acquire one user. I know that my net, uh, my net revenue per user is only, 50 cents, okay? That's an interesting already start. Now, the next step uh, would be to uh, look into, again, those average numbers and then see, okay, what will happen if uh, I were to improve my numbers? So for example, you can start creating a different scenarios. Uh, for instance, you will see, okay, what will happen if I can improve maybe my retention numbers? So um, I will keep 50% of users by month one, okay? Nothing else happens, right? You see that that number now goes by 10 cents of 14 cents, uh, almost 15 cents um, up. Uh, then you can say, okay, well, what will happen if I can maybe add a bit more uh, retention later on the, in those months? So this is where you can kind of start um, playing with those numbers. This is where, uh, when those numbers will become interesting uh, especially if you're doing a bit of the financial modeling or you're trying to calculate the profitability of the users. Okay, well, that's all from me uh, for today. Hopefully it all made sense or most of that it made sense. Uh, again, if you have any questions um, about to, today's tutorial, uh, just follow the links to my blog. Uh, if you have any specific questions or you'd like to discuss uh, your data requirements, uh, you can go to my website and schedule a free half an hour consultation uh, where I can hopefully answer all of the questions. All right. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon.